Now we are going to talk about the random oracles. So random oracle is both a design strategy. So we are when we are creating, let's say, a schema protocol, we are going to employ a random oracle. And it's also a proof strategy. The definition of a random oracle is essentially says that random oracle is a random function. So it has some domain, let's say D, and some range, let's say R. So random oracle is a randomly chosen function such that among all functions with this domain and this R, that function is chosen randomly. But it's a function, meaning that every time the same input is given to the random oracle, the same output needs to be returned. So the way to think about a random oracle, you can think about it as a lookup table, such that one column represents the input, one column represents the output. So for each input, a randomly chosen output is stored on this table. Whenever the random oracle needs to compute over some input x, we find that input and then return the corresponding y value. This would have been a perfect random oracle, but representing such a table requires exponential space. If this domain is, let's say, ambit values, then there are 2 to the n rows of this table. Instead, we are going to simulate this random oracle using a randomized way. But remember, we need to always return the same output given the same input. So the way we are going to simulate it is as follows. The random oracle will first initialize a database that is empty. Okay. Now whenever some input x is given, it will do two things. First, it will search its database for an x-y pair. If such a pair exists in the database, we will simply return that y associated with our x. Otherwise, what the random oracle will do is pick a y randomly from its range, then add to its database this xy pair, and then again return y. So we are essentially sending back this y in response to the input x. Now the claim is that essentially this version of the random oracle is equivalent. It can be simulated by this version. Why? Remember, this database is initially empty. When the first query comes for some particular x, what the random oracle will do is it will create a random y that corresponds to this x. So think about creating this first row with x and y here. And then it will return that y. If a new x comes, again it will do the same thing, in some sense creating the second row here. If the same x is given again, it will first look at its database, it will find it here, return the same y. So given the same input, it always returns the same output. But there's a huge difference. Remember, we said this requires exponential space, but this is a polynomial version of it. Why? There are only polynomial queries possible, and each query creates at most one entry in the database. So this version requires both polynomial time and polynomial space. 
These are essentially equivalent ways of thinking about a random oracle. Sometimes one is easier to imagine than the other. But in practice, we cannot use this version. In practice, we need to use something like this. Remember, random oracle is essentially a proof strategy. And the types of proofs we are doing are theorems such as we say if let's say scheme pi 1 is secure or assumption pi 1 holds then scheme pi 2 is also secure so this is the type of theorem we prove in general and remember our proof strategy is by contrapositive we say if scheme pi 2 is broken if there exists a probabilistic polynomial time adversary a that breaks the scheme then we show that scheme pi 1 is also broken and the way we show it is if we have such a probabilistic polynomial time adversary a that breaks scheme pi 2 we construct a probabilistic polynomial time adversary b that breaks scheme pi 1 if this claim is in the random oracle model so we say that if scheme pi 1 is secure then scheme pi 2 is secure in the random oracle model then this proof the contrapositive must also be in the random oracle model what does it mean in our security proofs done by reduction in the regular case we have this outside adversary b we need to construct and we have this inside adversary a that we have no idea about its code but what we know is a is playing the game for scheme pi 2 okay so here is the game for scheme pi 2 this is the security experiment security definition and we know that b is playing the game for scheme pi 1 it's trying to break scheme pi 1 or assumption pi 1 and normally we fill in the code for b we show that if the pro ad advantage of the adversary a is non-negligible advantage of adversary b here would be non-negligible this is the regular proof style in the random oracle model if our proof is in the random oracle model in addition to the game of pi 2 here anywhere within this game a also has access to random oracle queries so it will send some query x to the random oracle expect some answer y and of course since this is an oracle access it can be anywhere within this game so if the proof is in the random oracle model a in addition to the game it is playing also has access to random oracle queries furthermore as for b in addition to writing these code here b also must write the code for the random oracle so b's job is to simulate this random oracle that's essentially good for b because now b can see all the queries a makes and actually can return a response in a way that he likes for example in general in a random oracle proof strategy let's say we generated some particular value here in response to let's say some of these uh, interaction now we b can program this random oracle such that when an associated random oracle query is made it can return let's say the same value to a that's a great advantage for b so b can b needs to write the code for the random oracle but in addition b can tie this code of the random oracle to its original code essentially this is a requirement otherwise in general you wouldn't be able to prove security 
If you could actually, maybe you would, you didn't even need a random oracle to start with. So for random oracle proofs, in addition to the regular game A is playing, A also has access to random oracle queries, but these random oracle queries are answered by B, and the answers may depend on other actions of B. The remaining of the proof is the same. You need to show the probability uh, relationship between A and B and so on. You need to show B is polynomial time including its random oracle simulation. So the rest of the proof style is the same. The only difference would be here.